Here we go. Oral session with the one, the only. What do I call you on here? Whatever you want. Like, am I allowed to call you Breeze? On, I mean, on my intellectual property page, it says Tyler Breeze is on there. I don't think Breeze is on there. So Breeze it is. Breeze. Breeze. I Everybody knows Breeze. weird calling you anything else. Isn't it weird how that is in wrestling that like we all call each other names that are like not our names? Everybody has like three or four names and it that depends on how long you've known me. Yes. Yeah. So like there's, I think there's like two or three people. I really want to say just like TJ and Natty that call me Matthias because they know me from back on the Indies. Yeah. And then there's a couple people that call me Dalton because they remember me from Mike Dalton. Yeah. Then there's a couple of people that call me Breeze and then very few call me Matt. I don't think I've ever heard anyone call you Matt. Because n- almost nobody does. Like all of the other names I have heard, I think Dalton probably the most of any of those other options that weren't yep. just Breeze or Tyler Breeze. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I've ever heard anyone call you Matt. No, it, no, it's a very select Weird. few. Very yeah. select few. Like just, like just reserved for your mom. Uh, I don't even think she calls me Matt at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah that's Dude, right. how are you doing? What's going on? How have you been? What is happening in your life? Um, Oh man, it's, I, I don't know. So it, it's weird, like where to start kind of thing. Cause there's so much, you'd think that I would get less busy. Um, yeah. But which, you, you know, you probably know too. Uh, somehow I've gotten busier, um, but it's cool, like in a good way. So here's my question about that, because yeah. I struggle with this. Sure. I have become the worst boss I've ever had. Oh God. Because I have to book all my own stuff and I've got to sure. schedule my things. I was used to just having stuff pop up in an app and I could just be led by the nose like a ah, dummy of like, yep. log into this, be here, be there. Where all of a sudden I'm the one that's in the driver's seat, which is great. But like time management, like that's a whole other skill set that I'm like, oh shit, I'm in charge of all of this. Yes. Well, it's you're a mother hard. now, so you got to step it up. You know what I mean? I've got mom brain. I don't that's know right. what's going on ever. Yeah. I'm literally yeah. conducting this interview, standing up with a baby on my chest. We're coping <laughs> over here. We're coping at this point. I, surprisingly enough, I wouldn't expect anything, uh, <laughs> anything less from you. Um, okay. What have you been so damn busy with? So luckily, like you said, once you kind of take away the app part, um, you have to organize all your stuff. So luckily I'm kind of like half psycho where I need to like, I'm so ridiculously organized. Uh, otherwise my, my world you falls. You can be my like, um, what's her name? The, the, like the chick on uh, Netflix, just it's like, uh, she organizes everybody's life. You can. Oh that. yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So like, I have to do that. Otherwise my life turns to chaos. Like it feels like I can't get anything done or whatever. So I have like a list in my phone. That's constantly being updated of my to-do list. Mm -hmm. I have a calendar on my pantry door with like the little, like, um, like the dry eraser, you know what I mean? So I can just add that I got to see it and I got to do it. And I like constantly just check it throughout the day. Um, but so obviously, you know, when you get the call to, Hey, you don't have to wrestle anymore. I went, okay. Um, what can I do? So we had, we had, um, I mean, we had been streaming on Twitch like years before, and then we had to shut it down when everybody shut it down. So Ugh. I fired that back up immediately Yeah. and was like, okay, cool. Like here's, here's one thing. Cause like we wanted to do it anyway. So we started streaming. Obviously we still had the wrestling school going, um, because it was already going. So that just continues. Um, and then I was like, well, I could do like some appearances maybe here and there, but I really don't have an intention of wrestling in the near future. Yeah. So I just, I kind of put out like, yeah, I'm taking appearances and people started booking me for appearances and signings. And I went, okay. So like, there's a lot that I no can bumps still, and you can still get paid. Hell yeah. E- exactly. So like, <laughs> once you open up that world, um, there's a lot of random stuff that you can do that you don't even think about that can make you money and replace kind of that income. So um, aside from basically doing like some streaming stuff, uh, teaching at the school, um, I think at the time I was just finishing up another rental property. So like, you know, taking, I, I manage my rental stuff too. Like I don't have a company that does it. You're a so mad man. Good having all you. that on the go, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm okay with this right now. I like being this busy. How many rental properties do you have? Uh, three. Uh, well, like three and a half right now. Cause we have, we have a uh, student rentals as well. Okay. Um, but I I'm, I'm like half with that with, um, with Spears. So three and a half. Crazy. So I, I mean, I've always kind of found this fascinating about you because you've always been having this sort of side hustle, even when you were in WWE, 
Yeah. Um, so when this came about that, you know, you were released, they're cutting everybody, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Your ducks were already in a row. Like it was not, it didn't come as that big of a shock or financially hit you as bad as it could have. No, God, no. So like, I mean, obviously you, so you were, I was trying to think of this the other day. So when did you get to WWE? Um, I got to WWE. Well, I probably would have met you in 2003. 13 because I signed in 2012 but I didn't start on the road or doing anything at NXT until 2013 and then you started down in NXT interviewing yes so because that's I remember that's when I met you yeah and we did a ton of interview stuff together <laughs> and it, it was a blast so and um, um <laughs> also you did you like impersonated me I did Tanae Young was a Tanae huge hit <laughs> Tanae Young was a huge hit. Please, uh, you know, producer wise, can we add a photo of Tanae Young into this? Are we allowed to do that? I don't know if we're allowed, but yeah, if we're of allowed, course. please get you her. You can do there. anything. You can do get anything. Get her in nowadays. there. What oh, a wig. That was great. That was well, a great. We got time. to work a ton together. I mean, uh, how how long had you been at NXT before Tyler Breeze became a thing? Um, maybe three years. I got there 2010 in FCW still, so NXT didn't exist. And then by 2013, uh, I think, oh, no, 20, 2014. So end of 2013, started 2014, um, where basically, so in four years, I think they had tried to fire me like three, four times, maybe. Usually Good it was every six. Suckers. Yeah, usually it was every six months to a year. I was about <laughs> to get fired and then some miracle would happen and I would. So obviously, like when you're almost on the chopping block every six months, you start to prepare for that type of thing. <laughs> uh luckily like i was literally you know i was essentially prepared every six months to to get the 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 call yeah. and it never happened for 11 years so i had just been preparing uh, just scrounge away a bunch of oh, money in those oh god yeah years. <laughs> i was like when they do because this is going to happen someday i'm not going to have something that saves me and luckily like i said 11 years is ridiculous it's like double what the average lifespan is time. there yeah so i was fully prepared and and you know branching out into what the hell else i can do it's funny because i feel like when i started to really notice that i was like oh what is breeze doing what's going on over here because all of a sudden you've got like your louis shoes your louis belt i'm like <laughs> he's got a side hustle going i mean not that i mean wwe pays well to begin with yeah um but it's somebody that i know that you're like a money saver i'm like he's not just buying shit frivolously to buy shit frivolously yeah, that was very, uh, it was very tactically done. So <laughs> it's done so that um, you, you have to, to be successful, you also have to appear successful to people. True. Oh my right? God. That's really true. And that's something that I certainly forget sometimes. I mean, yes. Look at me. I'm like, hey, yeah, that, hey here we are. are both of us. <laughs> and, that, and that's the thing is like, and I'll, I'll kind of be surprised that it. it's one thing that we kind of try to instill. It's going away a little bit, which I don't like, but it, it, it needs to kind of, we tell our students all the time. Like it's, it's the old adage of, you know, dress for the job that you yeah. want. Like if, if I'm not going to show up as an extra at WWE or AEW, and look like a schlub, you know what I mean? Like I gotta you look a suit like guy, I belong. though. I feel like I don't remember you being a suit guy. So okay, so this is funny. So when I got hired by WWE, I was like 22, 23. And up until that point, I lived in Canada. I I worked at a homeless shelter, I worked at a railroad, like I did all this random stuff. I lived in sweatpants and hoodies because I lived in Calgary. Sure. Right. So I never owned a pair of like dress clothes at all. And so when I got hired, I got, I, uh, I moved down and I was living with Jinder Mahal and I went like, okay, so like, what do we, what do I do here? And he's like, would you have like a dress shirt? I said, no. He said, do you have dress shoes? No. Do you have a belt? No. Do you have a dress <laughs> pant? No, I have nothing. Yeah. So he took me to express, which okay. I have no clue what it is. Yeah. And I ended up spending like 600 bucks on like these like V-neck t-shirts <laughs> and like these vests and these whatever. And I basically loaded up on like this dress stuff. So because at the time there was kind of a dress code, but not like a suit and tie. Like it would right. go through the phases where it's like, you have to wear a suit. Yeah. You were then... like a vest and t-shirt guy. Now that you Always. said it's like, yeah, I, I like, yeah, I, I, I can fully picture the outfit at this yeah. point. That was my go-to. That was my go-to. If I wore nice shoes with some dress pants and a belt, I could wear a, a V-neck t-shirt with a vest over top and it looked spot you on. The system. That's right. So Hell it was comfortable yeah. enough, but it wasn't like a necktie. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, so then obviously I did that for, uh, years and years and years until I was like, okay, you know what, let's step it up to a suit or let's get some like, you know, designer looking stuff and just 
it's one of those things that every time I try to do with my gear too, you know, obviously with the character that I chose too, I can't just walk in. I got to look a little bit different than the average person because I'm supposed to be this male model fashion guy. So like my gear, I made sure that I told Sue, my gear lady, like I want every, every gear to, it's gotta be nice material that I probably can only wear a couple of times. Like as soon as I put on a pair of gear, like brand new and I walk out the locker room, I want everybody to go, Oh, that's cool. That looks really nice. And almost hundred percent of the time it worked. And then I did it in the same, like in my biz cash stuff of like, Oh man, look at those shoes. Oh man, look at this. Like it's, it just became like a, almost a game. You know what I mean? It's gotta be fun. I feel like putting the gear together for Tyler Breeze because it was so loud and so over the top. Like, like, cause I find sometimes like, like with John, if he's like, Oh, I need like new jeans. Like (laughs) he is so bound to that minimalist look yeah, that he kind of painted himself into a corner with it where you had like this broad spectrum of like, I'm going to add a boa. I'm going to add these feathers and furry boots and different material. Like you could really mess around with that. How, um, how much do you think you've spent on Tyler Breeze gear? Oh God. So here's the thing. You'll, you'll love this because we were talking about side hustles and stuff like that. So, uh, I've actually probably turned a profit from making gear. Oh. Because almost everything that I've worn, I've sold. Got some gear sniffers online, huh? That's right. That's right. There's always, <laughs> at one point, like I would wear something once or twice and then I'd sell it and I'd make money on it. Yeah. And I, I was like, great. Like I'm actually in the green, the more gear that I get made and it keeps my look fresh and everything God, else. That's so smart. You know, it's, I mean, it's very similar to when I had Zach Ryder on here and we were talking about that and how, I mean, I know he's a big proponent of doing things like that as well along with, um, you know, the action figures and whatnot, but yeah. there's always money to be made in these like other little places that you don't really think about. You'd be very surprised and like random stuff that you would just throw away and not think anything yeah. of it. Someone will probably Someone buy wants it. wants that. You know what I mean? Like they'll buy Randy Orton signed uh, wrist tape. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's just how it is. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, hey, get that money. Get that That's money. Right. Make That's it rain. Right. Uh, Okay. So you've been very busy. You've got lots going on uh, with the bookings and with your wrestling school and whatnot. Let's take it back to your days in Canada. Okay. What was your first moment of deciding I'm going to be a pro wrestler? Um, So funny enough, uh, I just told this story at the school um, because like we were going over promo class and we were kind of talking about like a lot of the times people get let kind of wrestling get in the way and it's that wrestling you know let me tell you something brother sure and we're like we got to get real you got to be real so like everybody has that moment when you kind of know when you were going to do it and I can vividly remember it almost to the point now where like I can go back and I can remember I was laying on a on the floor downstairs in my basement and I was just I think I was playing video games Calgary at this point no this was I was six years old so I was your baby I was living with my parents I was uh just in our house I was laying on the basement floor. uh, Well, so even more, even more like obscure. So if you know, it's so funny, Uh, obviously, you know, but like Canada, if anybody ever goes, where are you from in Canada? I go, it's by Vancouver. Like if I tell you anything else, you won't know. But if you know Vancouver, then I can tell you that it's by Kelowna. (laughs) And then if you know Kelowna, I can tell you that it's by Penticton. And then we actually lived on the outskirts of Penticton in a tiny, tiny little town called Naramata. Okay. Naramata. That sounds beautiful. I feel it's like, I feel like everything, country. You'd love it. everything in British Columbia sounds prettier than just about everything in Ontario. Uh, so uh, I was talking to Spears about this the other day, cause he's from Ontario. Um, Canada wise, Ontario and BC are very similar though. Cause they're both very beautiful. And like um, the middle of Canada is, is interesting. Cause like you go to BC, you, you know, as soon as you cross over to Alberta, and then oh, yeah. you know, as soon as you get to Saskatchewan, yep. Manitoba, and then you're back in Ontario and all of a sudden there's trees and stuff again. You're yeah. Like, oh, cool. No, that's true. Yeah. As soon as, you know, offense, Quebec, but yeah, as soon as you like cross over, it's like, wait, what happened here? Yeah. Where yeah, are yeah. we? There's a lot more. Concrete. Oh, you know, immediately, yeah. you know, yeah, immediately. instantly. I mean, aside yeah. with the language barrier chain, that's but, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so basically I was, I was in there, Matt, I was laying on the, uh, the floor of my basement. Um, and my dad just kind of like poked <gasps> his head down the stairs and was like, Hey, uh, do you want to come watch wrestling? And I said, what I, what's wrestling? And then I walked up the stairs, the TV was in my parents' room and um, guys, I'm trying to tell the story. <laughs> and um, the TV was in their room and I walked in and like uh, WWE superstars is what it was called. Um, was on a Saturday. It'd be like a one hour kind of recap with like one or two matches. And I remember walking on, it was like crushing the British bulldog. And I just sat there and I went like, whoa, this is the coolest thing ever. And I immediately got like a, a VHS tape 
popped it in the VCR, pressed record. And then every Saturday from then on out, I had to be sure, like if we were going somewhere, I had to be home for noon so that I could record superstars. <laughs> and from that point, literally from that point on, it sounds so cliche because, you know, obviously everybody's got like the dream and I wanted to do this my whole life and blah, yeah. blah, blah. But literally from that point on, everything was geared towards, hey, what are you going to do when you're finished high school? I'm going to become a wrestler. Yeah, sure you are. You'll grow out of it. Did and that make was- you like an outcast in high school or were people into it? No, no, no. So wrestling went through the phases where like, it was cool. Wrestling for a while was like really cool. Sure. Like everybody knew D-Generation X or the NWO, or you're yep. either with WWF or you're with WCW. Um, and then, it, and then it kind of turns like as people start growing out of it and they get into like high school and stuff, then it starts to almost get looked down on of like, oh, you like wrestling. Sure. But then you find out later down the line that people are actually still into it. They just don't tell their <laughs> Closet friends. Closet fans. Always, always. Yeah. And then even like, even to the point when I think I was like, 1920. Uh, I just finished wrestling school. I was working on the railroad with like these grown men. What a go, what a like old school gig, just working on a railroad. Oh, Look CP at you. rail, dude. CP yeah. rail. <laughs> and um, and I'm sitting there and like I'm working with these guys who were like, you know, 40, 45, whatever. And they're like, oh, so you wrestle. Yeah. Oh, I used to watch wrestling. And then all of a sudden they're they're telling me like current storylines <laughs> that are going on. And I go, Yeah, we all used to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just, I don't know why it's like that, where it's almost like looked down upon to be a fan of it. But it, it is, it is very funny. And I feel like that has, I mean, yeah, it, it comes and goes in waves. Like there are it times does. it does. Because right now I feel like everyone's a fan, whether you, mm-hmm. you know, regardless of what you're watching. Yes. The fandom is like coming out of the woodwork. People are like, oh shit, what's yes. going on? What's happening? Hold on. That's right. Because there's lots to talk about and there's lots happening. So people kind of want to pop their head back in and see what's going on. Especially when you can see like familiar names pop up in there. Like Stang. Stang. Like Stang. Um, what was your first bump experience? First bump experience? It? Uh, I do. So uh, I actually was one of those ones that like, I loved wrestling. So me, I had two friends, Mike and Jeremy, who were going to go to wrestling school with me when we graduated. And I remember we used to like, we would wrestle in my basement just on like a mattress. And we had like, we'd make characters and, you know, have our own show and videotape, whatever. When my dad finally saw that the wall that we used as the ropes was all like, drywall was all broken he said no more of this so we ended up building a ring in my backyard and then we like what did you build it out of so i built it out of uh it was just like a wooden frame and then i had stacks of tires underneath to give you a little bit of cushioning god and then it was like oh it was like i looked on the internet at like how i could build a ring and i built like a legit ring the only thing we couldn't figure out was how to make the ropes tight Uh. um so but i ended up like essentially kind of trying to teach myself the basic basics, basics to, to get ready for wrestling school. And my mom was very adamant. Like you are not like, you know, cutting yourself and you're not hitting each other with chairs. Don't gig brother. Like, yeah. Like you are just, <laughs> you are being very careful. Whatever I said, yes. I said, like, I'm, I'm, I just want to learn how to like what it feels like. And so we didn't necessarily know how to bump, but like we were falling on like, you know, wood with a little bit of carpet underlay um and then so i was like okay like this is kind of giving me an idea of what it likes uh, of what it's like and i'll I'll kind of go that way and as soon as i graduated high school i moved over to calgary went to lance's school yeah and the first week of learning how to bump uh i remember i couldn't even lift my head in the shower like i was like Uh. oh god oh god oh god this is what it's going to be like (laughs) like i am i this is horrible this is nothing like what i was preparing for what is the best stuff that Lance was able to pass along to you? I mean, obviously he is one of the best people for, you know, young wrestlers to want to go train under. Yep. Um, and, you know, I feel like you came in probably at a, who else was there at Lance's with you? So we were at different times, but there was, um, you know, obviously like Peyton Royce, um, yeah. Cassie Lee, she was there. Um, Chelsea Green was there. Um, who else? Uh, Tennille, Tennille Dashwood was there. Um, who else? There was like a good group of us. I know I'm going to miss somebody because I'm on the spot, yeah. but there was like a solid group of people that trained at Lance. Even, even now, uh, Dominic Mysterio, Brian yeah. Pillman Jr. Like all these guys trained with Lance. So he Gotta has like go a to Canada. Good... Canada is where it's at. Uh. Yes. And that's it. Obviously it falls on the, uh, the school and level of training because yeah. right now, like Renee Young could pop up a, uh, you know, a school and teach people. Right. And people would, I guarantee people would attend it, but you, the you broadcasting don't really... school of Renee young. Here's how yes. you conduct a wrestling interview. <laughs> That's right. Um, but anybody can pop up a school. It's just a matter of like, who's teaching you. Obviously Lance storm has a very good 
resume. Yeah. Um, so when I went there, I was actually initially looking at OVW um, because I knew that it at the time was like the developmental for WWE. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go to uh, Louisville. I'm going to go to OVW. But being from Canada, yeah. I had no clue how I was going to go down there, get a job, survive, whatever. So I talked to somebody who ran like the front desk and they were like, yeah, you can't work down here. And so I went, okay. How annoying so, is that shit? I feel like I have so brutal. many conversations where people, I just, I don't know if, just because I've had such a annoying experience with it. I feel like I love to air my grievances about how hard it is to go from Canada to be working in the United States. It's such a kick in the dick. I just don't understand it. Like it's, you can't, it limits you so much to where yeah. I got some indie experience, but I couldn't go work at anyone that had like any sort of clout because yeah. I was stuck in Canada. And so even going to get initially trained, like I said, going to Louisville, I would have had to save over $10,000 for like yeah. the three months or whatever that I was going to go down and get trained for room board, whatever. And I just went, Oh God, like I'm not ready. I don't have enough money saved for this. I'm, I'm 18 years old. And, um, so then all of a sudden Lance's popped up and it was right next and it was in Canada. And I went, Oh, this is perfect. Fun. Like, w- like one, it's Lance storm Two, It's I can still work and I can just move there. I'm good. Yeah. So it was a no brainer to go there. Um, and when I went there, there was like, I mean, I couldn't ask for better training. I definitely would not make it to where I am now without the foundation that he laid. Did you um, check in with Lance, like throughout your career to get advice? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Every yeah. step, every step along the way. Um, cause even like he started right off the bat, the main things that I've taken from him is how a school should be run. Mm-hmm. Like we, we, the way that we train is how I was trained. Yeah. Like we have a very, it's very much a hybrid of what he taught and how he taught. Yeah. Um, and then he also taught me that about technique, like everything is footwork and everything is, is a certain way for a reason. We don't just do random stuff because we've seen it on TV. Mm-hmm. And the biggest thing I'd say that he, pro- that he probably taught was that uh, to be smart, like this will end at some point, whether by your choice or someone else's choice, be smart with your money. And he, and he talked to, about like doing your taxes and like being on top of your, um, of your money situation. Yeah. And it should be at the forefront of what you're thinking. Like, it's not just wrestling because it's when you make enough money, you should be looking at what do you do after wrestling? Yes. You've got a lot of life to live after. And unfortunately, not a lot of people are taught that or not a lot of people think like that. And that's, I think, sports in general. Because I know, I mean, WWE, oh, was, you know, they would bring in financial advisors every now and then to yep. kind of remind us out of like, hey, save your money. I know they do a similar thing through the NHL, I'm sure NFL, et cetera, et cetera. Because yeah. yeah, you put these young adults some, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're so young. You all of a sudden are making six figures. It's like, oh my God, here we go. Let's make it rain. You can fall into yeah. like some really bad patterns yes. of spending money where you should be spending money. Or all of a sudden you've got friends or family that are, you know, have a handout that needs some money from you. That's right. It can be a real slippery slope to try to stay ahead of. So I think being able to be educated on that, and like you said, even like the tax stuff and all that, there's so many life things that we should be educated about in schools. That's I've had this conversation several times about like, so I, I, I'll be honest. I wasn't the most interested in, in high school because I knew what I was going to do. I was going to go to wrestling school and that was it. So like yeah. really in high school, I just kind of figured it like I was going through it and it was wasting my time because I wanted to go to wrestling school. Yeah. And even like, as I'm going, I'm like learning about these things and I'm like, okay. So I kind of like the creativity part of English class. Cause I'm writing some stories and I'm creating characters and stuff like that. But there's science and there's math and stuff that I know a hundred percent. I'm not going to use this later in my wrestling career. Yeah. So I, I just, it didn't interest me and I checked out and I couldn't get out of high school fast enough. Um, and even I had friends who, you know, you probably did too, who went to, to college and they paid, you know, 10, 20, $30,000 oh yeah, they're in debt for so long trying to pay that off. Yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? And they said, I have no idea. Like, I don't even know huh. what I want to do yet. Yeah. And I went, okay, well I do. So I'm not going to go to college. I, I I'm not going to, I'm going to go to wrestling school. And even, and now, like, as I've learned about finances and stock market and real estate and taxes and all this stuff, I'm like, man, if they would have taught me about this earlier, this is very, very valuable to life. Like you need to know about this stuff. If you're not interested in your finances, I don't know what you're interested in because like your car is a, as cool as you look, it's going to be a really bad investment. Yep. Your, you know, your designer stuff that you're spending all your checks on it's not going to give you a return. Yeah. It it all depreciates in value. There's like, yes, you have to, I love, and that's the main thing that I was taught was, you know, I can have all of my, I can have my house right now and I can pay for it with your money. 
Yeah. And I like, I like that because I like to keep my money. Yeah. And once you learn that, like, man, it, it's, I don't know, being a young person trying to start in this world is very difficult. Like to buy a house and get ahead and whatever, oh like God. things are expensive, especially if you don't know what to do. Yep. We need to like, that's, I don't know. That's a very important thing that, that young people should be focusing and on. And if you make like one bad decision, you can be paying for that for years and years. I oh. mean, whether it's like, I mean, that happened to me if, in the sense of like when I was, you know, what we were just talking about going from Canada to working in the United States. And I was like, well, I need to find, I need to get a visa. And I yep. paid some crook ass lawyer oh. five grand yep. for a visa that didn't even get approved. And I just oh. did not have $5,000 to spare. So That's a lot. That's a lot of money. Me, that was a lot of money at the time. And it sat there on my credit card. Um, and then I could no longer even use that credit card because it was maxed out. That's right. And then I did get a visa. To, and this was actually like not long before I signed to WWE. Then I'm living in New York City, which oh. is expensive as hell. Yep. So I can't save money. I'm struggling to pay off my credit card. It was like a couple years after that, that I was like, okay, let's deal with this and yeah. just fully pay that off. And like, man, what a weight off my chest to be debt free. Like it well, is, that's, it's what are like. What did like, so before WWE, I don't think I ever had more than a thousand dollars in the bank. No. And, no. and like, it's, it's, it's very odd. Cause like, I was like, okay, I got hired by WWE. It took like, I want to say six months maybe for my visa process to go through to mm -hmm. actually be going down there. I'm getting paid for this time. So like, by the time I get down there, I have from going to two tryouts from flying myself there, from trying to make it, I have yeah. a credit card that's maxed out at $10,000. Uh-huh. And I don't have any money and I finally get my first check and it's over $10,000 and I pay off my debt. And I went, Oh my God, I'm rich. Ugh. Like I have so much money now when really I have a thousand dollars and no debt. And I was like, <laughs> but, this is crazy. But being debt free and having that financial stress, like that puts people in a bad spot. It also then puts you in a spot to continue to make bad decisions because you're oh. trying to find a quick fix. Also, can you imagine $10,000 on your credit card at 19%? <laughs> interest yes. every month like good luck welcome good to luck. our ted talk everybody this is oh. our financial conversation unreal unreal <laughs> so everybody save your money and find some other lucrative side projects please that is the please way to go please yes yes okay so you get into wwe um you're at and well what was fcw at the time yeah so, so you were at fcw obviously then it became nxt yes what was your time like working with dusty Rhodes? um it, it was interesting. It was interesting. So I, like some people see it as a detriment. I actually view it as kind of a blessing in disguise. Um, I've obviously never been like the guy or the guy that, and I, I even thought about this the other day in my 11 years that I was with WWE, I don't know if I've ever actually received like an official push. So I, I always find this funny, especially with somebody like you, because I feel like I mean, you're, I think in like a similar way to like TJ where like yep, yep. everyone knows how good you are. Like you're a great wrestler. And I think like, I think the only time that it was, I mean, not the only time you've obviously been able to have great matches, but when you got to have that match with Liger, mm -hmm. that was like such a showcasing of who you are and what you can do. And the fact that nothing ever really came from you being able to put on a match like that with Liger is like, it, that's such a bummer. Well, it's, it's, like I said, it's kind of a blessing in disguise. So uh, again, I've never really gotten like, and even that match with Liger, I, a lot of people like hold that in, in high regard as like a really good match. Yeah. Me personally, I, it's, it's, it was special because it's him. Right. But in terms of like matches that I would, Hey, if you have five matches to watch, that'll make you a fan of mine. I don't know if that would be on the list because just technically it's not, one of my ones that I'm, I'm proud of it. I, I don't hold it in the same category as like the fatal four way or the one I had with Sammy or whatever, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but it's very special in what it is. So, and even that, that wasn't what I would call like, uh, you know, a push. It was more of an olive branch to new Japan um, yeah. to kind of what we were going to do at the time and where we were going. Mm -hmm. um, but so in you, reality, you were like, the first forbidden door, dare, dare we say, dare we say, I, God, I, I very much was, I very much was <laughs> uh, until we messed it up. And, um, 
So it's, it's one of those things where like, again, like look over my career and see if you can actually identify like a push push because there's not one there. Right. And I remember I had this conversation with Dolph who like, uh, he just kind of said, look, man, like it's very obvious who are their guys and who aren't their guys. Mm-hmm. And he goes, and even when you're not their guy, he's like, you figure out how to have a match with their guy and you steal the ball from them. You steal the show yeah. and they still won't give it to you. He goes, that's just how it is. He goes, but the key is, is you'll always work with those guys and you'll always be around because you can, you can make them look really good. And I said, yes, I said, that's really what my career has been. But when you are also on the chopping block every six months, you see the real sides of people. So like they, you don't get the, you know, everybody worshiping you and, and, you know, talking really good and being on your bandwagon. You get all the ones who like, they know you're on your way out. So they show you the real sides of them. Oh and my then, God. and then you really that's see just it. Like kind of made my stomach turn a little bit. That seems oh, yeah. like something I would not want to be a part of. Uh, it, it's, it's like I said, it's good and bad. Like you um, kind because, of want to be that fly on the wall to hear what people have to say about you, but then you're like, yeah. what the f- how could yes. you? Yes. And then once you start kind of things going your way and you, you have a bandwagon, it's very interesting to watch those same people and how they treat. They jump back on it. Um, so I personally love it because then you find out who really matters, who really doesn't, who's really your friend, who really isn't like, that's how you really decide yeah. who's in your circle. You know what I mean? Ooh. And uh, I was on both sides with almost everybody, um, Dusty included. So um, for the first little bit, like I didn't really have a whole lot of interaction with Dusty because I just wasn't one of his guys. Like I remember like even um, so like a Seth or a, a, a John for that matter. Yeah. They came into FCW and them and Dusty, like they were side by side immediately and Dusty loved them. They could cut promos and like they were on the shows and away they went. Like yeah. they were never really on the other side of like trying to get booked and trying to get a character in and trying to do whatever. And nothing like that really happened. Like I would do stuff and it was just kind of like, okay, great job, Mike, whatever. And like move on. Yeah. And then um, the last straw was kind of when I had to come up with Tyler Breeze. And I remember I sent, I think there was four characters. There was four characters that me and Woods made as like vignettes. And I emailed them to every email I had. I literally sent them to, I think at the time, Johnny Ace was in charge. Uh, Ty Bailey was underneath him. Dusty was there. Doc was there. Joey Mercury was there. Like all these people were there. And every email I could get my hands on, I sent them to every single one. Yeah. And the only person who got back to me was Dusty. And he went, hey, uh, we might have something with this Tyler Breeze one. Let's talk. And I said, okay. And then I went in, I talked to him and he kind of went like, this is, I, I think this is something because he'd watch me flounder and like not really be able to find something. Right. And then he was like, I said, what should I do with this? And he said, try it. When we do promo days, try it out, see what happens. And I just started kind of like having fun and doing it. And I'd watch him and he would laugh his head off. He went, <laughs> oh my God. He goes, this is, this is, there's something here. This is a really good, funny character. And, uh, that's when the kind of the ball started to roll. And that's when the other people, because now Dusty had said, Hey, there's something here. Uh Now, all of a sudden this guy's back and this guy's here and this guy's here and this guy's here. And Hey, you're doing so good. Oh my God. Well, I remember watching as you were putting together the entrance for Tyler Breeze. And because, I mean, that was such an over the top. Oh my God, it's Tyler. That's right. Of like just putting together what that entrance was and adding the selfie stick and all the yep. feathers and the boas and whatnot. Um, but I mean, yeah, at that point, everyone was firmly on your bandwagon because, and that's when I think I was around or just started being around because I was definitely not around while John and Seth were doing their thing with Dusty. Yeah, it was after that because when I was there, I was under the impression that you were a big deal and were getting a push. That's how it felt to me. Oh, definitely not. So <laughs> that was, that was a Hard struggle. No. That was a struggle the entire time. So the, even, even the birth of the Tyler Breeze character, um, we, so we were doing a thing with ESPN. It was E60. Oh yeah. I remember um, that. And it was on Woods, Leo Kruger, uh, Colin Cassidy, and Graves. myself and Corey Graves. Yeah. Well, what we were told at the time was that we were just doing uh, uh, a cool, like E60 piece on the five of us. And I went, cool. Awesome. Great. And as we're filming it is when I started to transition into Tyler Breeze. So they got the whole transition in my debut. Well, Triple H tells us at the end of like one of those meetings at the end of the tapings that uh, the ESPN tape, the E60 thing we're doing was supposed to have a couple guys who made it, a couple guys who we don't know, and a couple guys who got fired. And me and Big Cass were supposed to be the two that got fired. Shut up. 
And during the time I found Tyler Breeze and he found his thing with Enzo yeah. and it completely 180 and all of a sudden like, no, we're, we can't fire these guys. Like they're, they're doing good now. And we wow. were like, he said this in front of everybody for the first time. And we went, <laughs> oh my God. With the thing we were very excited about, we were going to get fired at the end of? For oh everybody my else's God. entertainment for the storyline for this E60 bit? Yes, yes. Oh and my I went, God, that you were is- to the f- Wolves. That's right. That's right. And we had no idea. Fortunately, uh, me, for me and Cass, we both found something that saved us again, you know, like the, the common pattern. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was at this time too, that like, again, um, even when I, I think I debuted and everybody was like, okay, cool. Like, yes, there's something here. And then they, they booked me in matches to where like, they were learning who I was and the crowd was starting to get into it. But I still was not anywhere. I wasn't never going towards the NXT title. I was never going towards, you know, being the guy, the face of NXT. Uh, I was never going towards a big, you know, baby face turn or anything like that. It was always just, um, okay. So I, I remember, uh, I think the first test because the, they were like, okay, this is a cool gimmick. Like he comes out, he takes the pictures, he wrestles a tiny bit and away we go. We need to see if there's any substance to it. Um, so then I had a match with Sami Zayn at the first takeover. Mm-hmm. And after that one, I remember Triple H pulled me aside and he went, Hey, look, he goes, um, Kevin Dunn called and he said, he loves the Tyler Breeze character. Oh, okay. I'll take and back I went, my I went, <laughs> yeah. And I went, and I went, okay. Um, and he went, uh, Vin- Vince also saw it and Vince likes the character. He goes, this was the proving point that there is more to Tyler Breeze than just the, the, the gimmick. He goes, yeah. now you, now you can have a match now this is we know we can do something with this and i went awesome and from there it was i worked with so i worked with sammy that was the test kind of thing then after that i went and worked with neville um after that i worked we did the fatal four way with me neville and tj Mm -hmm. then i worked with uh kenta then i worked with finn then i worked with essentially everybody coming in that they were gonna go with right um so it wasn't so much a you know a push as opposed to now I've proved that I could be a reliable guy you were, that yeah, you, you can the, toss you in there. Hand. Yes. You can toss me in there with whoever you'd like and we can make them look really good. Mm-hmm. And we know that, and I think Triple H even said a couple of times of like, he's like, there's a certain quality that some guys have and some guys don't. He goes, you can, you can basically lift people up to a certain level without bringing yourself down to a different level. Right. He goes, you keep yourself a star while bringing them up to a star level as well. Um, which obviously if you're introducing somebody like a Finn or a Kenta or whatever, that is a huge thing because the first impression of like a new person, we need to make sure that we knock it out of the park if we're going with them or if they're heading towards, you know, being a main event guy or an, yeah. uh, an NXT champion or whatever, you need somebody like that gatekeeper to kind of go, Hey guys, welcome. This is what they can do by the Here's way. Here's the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So you say though, I mean, you say that it was kind of like a blessing in disguise in the sense that like, you never really got that big push to be that guy, but you got to work some really great matches. You, I mean, you were under contract for 11 years. So this isn't something you look back on and feel negatively towards. Not at all. And like, it's funny hearing some people because they'll be like, oh man, like your career was never anything or, or, or you never made it to a certain level or you didn't win any titles or whatever. Um, it was never about that. Like, that's one thing that I was kind of taught to by Lance is like, the titles are just titles, man. Like it, it not, the best people don't necessarily have the titles. Yeah. Some people need the titles to go into a certain level and be a star. The titles are to, you know, help get you to a certain place or, you know, hey, the fans are really like this guy. They're buying his merchandise, give him some titles, whatever. Yeah. It, it, but never once have I ever been, you know, held my, um, my value or my credibility on if I get titles or wins at sure. this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I would much rather, I loved being able to watch and like if somebody walked in and they looked at the at the card on the wall and they went oh i'm working breeze tonight awesome yeah that to me is like that's the biggest badge of honor that's the biggest thing is that my peers respect me and if they see they're working me they smile and they go this is going to be fun yeah absolutely um so you do you miss wrestling right now where do you where is your heart right now when it comes to wrestling so when uh when I got, uh, when I got released, I kind of was like, okay, I could go work, you know, every weekend if I wanted to. Um, obviously right now there's a big influx in people either getting released or people, you know, joining AEW or, or, or even like ROH impact, wherever they're going, you know, yeah, well, like there's ROH a lot of anymore, unfortunately. not anymore. Yes. Or for now, for now. 
For now. Um, but, but there's a lot of wrestling out there, right? And mm-hmm. so everybody, like, it seems like every show, there's like, oh, a big debut, whatever. And I went, I think, like, one, luckily, I don't need to work every weekend or, or do whatever. Like, I can kind of afford to take a break to where, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, when you're a smaller guy in wrestling, uh, you take a lot of bumps yeah. and you get beat up a lot yeah. more than the big guys. Yeah. So like in, after 14 years, I never really, I took one break in 14 years and that was to go get married. And I was off for like nine days. Yeah. And so it, nine days in 14 years essentially is what I was off. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, and so I kind of just went, you know what? Uh, let's just take a, a second here to like reassess. Like, I got to see how I'm feeling first off. Cause like, I just want to, I want to be a healthy 33 year old man. You know what I mean? Sure. So I stopped for like a month and all of a sudden everything hit me like a ton of bricks <laughs> and like <laughs> my knees kind of hurt, my hips hurt, my back hurt, my neck hurt, my shoulders hurt. And I went, okay. So I got to fix this first and foremost. So I what got, do you do uh, to fix that? What's your so, so I have a, uh, I have a masseuse and I have a chiropractor. Um, and they bet they kind of just go like piece by piece and we go, all right, what's the first thing here? Okay. Well, my knees. Okay. Well, how do my knees feel? And luckily I'm very, I'm so ridiculously fortunate where I've never had any surgeries. I've never broken things. Like I've been good. And so I was like, ah, maybe my knees are screwed. And he went, nope. He goes, all it is, is that like, everything's tight. So it's pulling on everything. So between him and my masseuse, they worked on my legs until all of a sudden my knees feel okay. And then, okay, my hips are kind of tight. All right, let's work on your hips. And then, oh, week after week, we get in there, we work on my, on my hips. All right, cool. My neck, my neck was a big issue. And uh, I was like, is it like actually messed up or what? And they said, like, it's a combo of things. We need to basically loosen it all up. And like, we need to kind of get it moving again. Boom, they nailed it, done. So oh, now man. the only thing that that's kind of been lingering, but it's, it's the best. <laughs> And after um, having like just had a baby, I'm like, oh my God, can somebody come work on my body? Please? Yes. Oh. I have a miracle team, a miracle team. And now the last lingering thing is my arm, my shoulder, um, which we thought initially it was my shoulder, my, my rotator cuff. It's my bicep tendon. Um, and it's just kind of like pinching. So like, I just can't work out how I want to, because I just can't, I got no strength. It pinches and it stops. So we've been working on it like crazy and it's actually getting better to where I'm like, okay, I'm very, very close to being where I want to be. And now I don't want to go wrestle anywhere until I'm back in shape and I'm back in wrestling shape because aside from the school, I haven't really wrestled for now for like three months or four months. And I'm not in the shape that I want to be to go somewhere. And I'm really not going to go somewhere out of shape and whatever. Yeah. Um, And even then, like watching i haven't really watched a whole lot of wrestling i watch here and there like when my friends are on you know obviously when like woods wins the king of the ring yeah um when when cole debuts like this type of stuff i'm gonna watch but for the most part i haven't watched a lot and even when i do watch there's the nothing that really makes me go like oh man i think i would have a really fun match with this guy or i think this would be really cool um nothing is really sparking me to like force me to go yet and uh i remember when cole was like kind of like figuring out what he was going to do. I watched what he debuted and the crowd was back. And I think like, especially too, because when I kind of finished up, there was the crowd wasn't really back yet. It was, but it wasn't. And watching an arena full of people, uh, when they react, it made me, it got, I got goosebumps for it. And I went, I went, Oh, (laughs) I want a little bit of that. It's still in there. It's still in there, but it's not quite there yet. So I'm going to just relax until it's fully there. And I have to pull the trigger on. And there's got to be, I imagine, a part of you based off of everything we just spoke about. I mean, your peers all love you. They all love to work with you. There must be a part of you that wants fans to be able to see more of that from you. I think so. Like it's, I just feel like, you know, obviously at 33, I still have more to offer. Yeah. Um, And whether that's honestly like, it's not because I know a lot of these guys have like the, you know, well, I got another run in me or I can be the champion or whatever. I honestly don't, you know, if you look at, um, and this isn't like selling myself short or anything like that, look at the guys who are going into AEW. You have Dan, uh, Brian Danielson and you have Punk and you have Cole and you have these guys who are like, they're in a different category than a Tyler Breeze, I feel. Um, but I still feel like I can add to a show if I'm on it. Sure. Um, and I think that I still have a lot of offer uh, to to offer, and I think I can still have a lot of fun um, wrestling in, in in a maybe a new you know avenue or a new audience or those people who have went 
man, I've really wanted to see this guy wrestle in certain types of matches and I haven't got to see it because of how this was booked or yeah. whatever. Um, so I, I still think there's some meat on the bone there. Um, and I think it would be fun. And like I said, I just want to make sure that like, it's right before I fully just do it to do it. You know? Well, I mean, I, I think if I were you, I would just, you know, make sure that the abs are right. Get that spray tan ready and let's right. get out there and call it a day. <laughs> I'm not coming back without abs. That's for sure. How happy are you to not have any spray tan on your body right now? Oh, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I have it, I, it, it's really funny. Cause like I'll go places and people are like, you live in Florida. Why are you so like pale? <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, cause like I didn't put any, I'm not putting tanner on for this. Yeah, you know what I mean? Oh like, my God. The smell of tanner blow my brains out. Ugh, oh, kills oh. me. I actually, the <laughs> other day, cause I'm like so pale right now. It's like, I'm like in pale, just had a baby. Maybe mm-hmm. I should like, I don't know. Maybe if I put on a little self tanner, I'll feel better. I put it on like sure. that. Yep. I don't yep. have time for that. It makes my bed smell weird. Like I'm, oh, yeah. my baby's sleeping next to me. Like it's not happening. Absolutely. I'm wearing a white shirt right now. There's no tanner on it. We're good. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. Getting into up, up, down, down and into this Twitch world, because that has cool. been quite a great spot for you and everything that you've been able to do with Woods, with Claudio, with Adam. I mean, you guys had a hell of a team putting yeah. that all together. How is it now on the other side of everything with people in different promotions and everyone's doing different things and doing your own thing on Twitch? Like, how do you navigate that? How does that work? So it depends. Um, I mean, obviously up, up, down, down is owned by WWE. So, you know, they're in charge of, of that aspect. Um, you know, with Claudio being there and with Woods being there, they're obviously, you know, it's, it's WWE kind of productions. Mm-hmm. We have a couple things that we're working on, um, you know, that I can't really touch on yet. Uh, in, ter- in terms of that but you know with cole going to aw obviously it sucks because we had something real good going um, with the four of us and uh, again i think there's a lot of it's it, it's it's very interesting um we've gotten a lot of stuff that you don't expect from like four guys just getting together to play uno yeah <laughs> um we've gotten a lot of like hey guys you have no idea how like how much of an escape this is for me and my life and from a ton of people to where we just went like wow it really like kind of made an impact on people, which is crazy. Um, and, and, and that was very, very important to us that people were telling us this. Um, so now with Cole kind of over there, um, not being able to do stuff or, or as much stuff with him, we can still, you know, find ways to do things with him. Um, but not doing our usual weekly content. Uh, yeah. it, it sucked. I know that all four of us have said like over and over that like, man, we really miss like being able to do you know, what we do. Um, but I definitely don't think it's, yeah, it feels like, it. like, it feels like a sad, like breakup when you're like, I don't want to break up, but we're like moving to different parts of the world. And how can we make this work? It's yeah. Like heartbreaking. But, and, and it is, it is, but it is. And I think that like, it's, it's, it's built something so special that it's just a matter of time before there's a, you know, reunion or there's a way to do it and we'll figure it out. Um, just for right now, it's a little pause and it's almost better to wear, we left people wanting more yeah. instead of like getting bored of us. Sure. Yeah. So now it's like Good spot to be in. Yeah. Every time we pop up together, they're like, Oh God. Awesome. Okay, cool. You got to yeah. go here now. Cause they're on here. Um, which we have done several times on, on my Twitch, um, or on Cole's Twitch. Like there's a bunch of stuff that we can do. Um, it's just a matter of like, now they're, you know, special appearances as opposed to weekly stuff. You and I were talking before just recently about, how difficult it can be because I mean, wrestling fans are so passionate and they want to support everything. And that aspect of it is awesome. Yeah. But when you want to like, like, okay, cool. So you're a fan of me from this thing. Watch me go do this other thing. And it just doesn't really work that way. Yeah. It can be so frustrating. I wish I knew the answer. I'm constantly trying. I feel like, I don't know. Is it just like a keep doing it and time will work in your favor or is it, uh, just a dead end. Well, I know. So what I've found is that consistency is key. So like, you can't just do one thing and then hope that everybody, you know, goes crazy over it. Yeah. You have to grind. You have to kind of like get in the trenches and, and go to work. Like we're now, so before when we were doing Twitch, like a couple of years ago, we just kind of pop on whenever we didn't really have a schedule. We just kind of be on when we be on. Um, but now if you're trying to make it a thing, like we have a schedule. We are on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. And we have like, you know, stuff that's sponsored and we have stuff that's this and we have stuff that's that and it's on YouTube and it's this. And like, you have to kind of put in that legwork and have somebody um, helping you to grow a channel in a natural way. You can't just expect because we were on TV that people are going to go, 
oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do everything you want me to do. Like you still have to work for people's attention and, sure. and for people's money and for people's um, you know, loyalty. Um, luckily we have a leg up on the average person starting something, mm -hmm. but from there you have to deliver. And now you're you very to... lucrative in the fantasy football world. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Just the, maybe the worst hey, fantasy hey, league yeah. ever. Um, great people though. Great, people. great though. people. Great group. We're figuring oh, it out. I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you have to, you, uh, we get an opportunity to start off ahead of the curve but that curve can, can drop greatly if you do not produce content worth watching. Sure. Um, and that is where you have to, you know, uh, and some people understand, so obviously you would understand this, but if you need to host something, by the time you unplug, you're spent, man. Like you oh need to be entertaining. God. You cannot yeah. just be, hi guys, this is me playing video games. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you have, have to engage to, the whole time. Oh God. They um, want to be interactive. That's the thing with Twitch that um, sort of stressed me out. Cause at one point I was like, Ooh, I kind of want to dip my toe in this water. It seems great. I mean, shit, a platform, you can just kind of go on and do whatever you want to do. But I'm like, hold on. You've got to be on for like hours at a time. Like, Oh my goodness. Like that, well, that's just, uh, it's a lot. You need to be able to multitask. So like I have right now I'm staring at three monitors because when I stream, I have to have like one monitor is everything about the stream that I need to know, like how long we're going, how many people are here, how the bit rate is, how the audio, how the video, all that stuff. Then I have the main screen where I'm actually playing the game, probably with somebody else. So like Spears, me and Spears are on here all the time. And then I also, so I'm talking to Spears. Then I'm also reading a chat. Oh that's God. the chat that's talking to me. So I'm literally, as you're playing video games, like I said, you can't just go, hi guys, I'm playing a game now and I'm not going to say anything. No. Now instead, like I'm talking to Spears and I'm going like, hey man, what's going on? Oh, hey Renee, how are you doing? Oh, awesome. Cool. Blah, blah. Like you are on. And by the end of it, like it is tiring. It is, yeah. it is, uh, it can take a lot out of you if you're good at it. Um, but again, if you want people to watch, I don't know how entertaining it is for me to sit here and not say a word and just play video games yeah. with my friend. But if you are there chatting and I'm chatting to you as well, people, you know, who maybe don't have a lot of friends or maybe they struggle socially, that is their sure. outlet. And they look forward to every single time that you go live yeah. and you have to be able to give them a fun experience as opposed to, you know, one that makes them feel bad. God, you know? I'm such a dummy that I've never really thought about that in terms of the people that are sitting around watching and participating in these but how important it is for people that do have bad social anxiety or don't have, you know, a great circle of friends of people to be able to have that outlet with. So yeah, I don't know why I've just never really thought about it in those terms, but that is like pretty impactful when you think of somebody being able to be like, they rely on having that time. Well, and you. think about it too. Like this is such a crazy time where like, let's say back in, I don't know the, you know, whenever Elvis was there, what forties, fifties, sixties, like that yeah. era. You could write a letter to him, but like, what are the odds that he's going to read it right back to you and everything else? Yep. So like when you see him somewhere, people lose their mind and they go crazy. Well, now like those stars don't so much exist anymore because like, if let's say I'm your Elvis or I am your, you know, person that you love yeah. watching everything I do, whatever it is. And I pop on, you can go, hi Breeze. And I can go, Hey. hey, Renee, how are you? <laughs> like, yeah. it, it, that's insane. You just interacted with the person that you have posters of on the wall or you, yeah. you know, you, you think all this stuff about. We're so accessible that like, that is so huge and people love it. People love it if you acknowledge them, if you say their name, yeah. if, you, if you have a conversation with them, if you form a bond with them. Um, and even more, like, if you remember, like there's a yeah. certain amount of people in our chat that like, when they come on, I go like, oh, hey, what's going on? Yep, I remember that was actually your name. You like being called this, or maybe I saw you over here. Or what'd you think of this? You told me yeah. you're going away for the weekend. Like, yeah, you, it, they, people really are friends in that environment and they cool. become good friends. It is pretty cool. It's, it's cool to like build that environment. It just helps, you know, your fan base be that much stronger and like legit because you are almost like friends at that point. It's, it's pretty yes. cool. Okay, listen, we've talked about wrestling. We've talked about Twitch, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What's happening in your personal life? What, what's your like relationship status? I knew it, you nosy little thing. <laughs> what's going Classic on? Classic Renee. What is this? How, how do we take a turn blah, down blah, gossip? Blah. Here's what yeah. I want to talk about. Whatever. What's whatever. happening? What is the love life status of Reese? Um, it's very good. Very mm. good. Um, I've I've been with my girlfriend now for a year. Uh huh. Um, and everything is going very nice. That's so great. How did you guys meet? Uh, so we, <laughs> you'll laugh at this one actually. So we were training a, um, we were training a girl at the school 
and she was a former cheerleader. And at the time I was single and uh, this, this girl was married and I went, I went, Oh, you were a former cheerleader. Yeah. I said, do you have any cheerleader friends or anything like that? <laughs> and she said, I do. And I went, Oh, do you? And uh, she kind of showed me a couple of pictures of her friends, Instagrams and stuff. And I went, she said, should I give him like your number or like tell him about you? I said, yeah, yeah. I said, I said, you know, give me, give me your number. I'll text him. So uh, I ended, I ended up texting my girlfriend and she ghosted me. She didn't reply back. And <laughs> good, I remember good because you were like, yeah, she looks hot. She looks hot. Sure. Pass it along. She was like, I don't know. I got to test this out. Well, she didn't know. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I, she, she asked, she goes, she goes, so what'd she say? I said, she didn't reply back. And so to this day, she still says that like I text her late and she was already sleeping and whatever, who knows. Um, but she ended up replying. Everyone um, needs to be humbled. I'm glad she yes, humbled you. Yes. Um, and we ended up, you know, going on a couple dates. Um, she, she was living at Tampa at the time. Um, I was living in Orlando, obviously. So like, you know, it was kind of cool because um, she's kind of got her shit together and she's got a life of her own and she's got a job and she's not like, texting me every minute going what are you doing like she's got a life and she's got a uh, whatever and she lived in a how you know, important is that when somebody else has their oh. own shit like it's i love like i mean john and i are like a great example of that like he does his shit i do my shit obviously yep. like shit we're married and have a kid together like yes. we're in it to yes. win it at this point yep. obviously yep. but like to not get in a relationship where someone's breathing down your neck or dependent on you as being their only person that's so that was big i had to kind of I, so I've been, me and Spears laugh about this all the time. I'm like a serial monogamist. So I go from like relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship. Uh -huh. I've never actually had a time when I'm just like on my own. Yeah. Um, and this is like from high school on yeah. just because that's how I was. So yeah, um, I finally took like a good chunk to be by myself. You needed a little you time. It, it massively needed. <laughs> yeah. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot about like, you know, it's cool to make yourself happy. And then you can offer that happiness to, you know, join with someone else's happiness. Mm -hmm. But when you get into a relationship, a lot of the times people, you know, they tell their, their spouse or whatever, like, Hey, you know, it, it, not in these words, but my happiness is your responsibility yeah, and yours is mine. In pressure. reality, in my opinion, it is not that way. And I think yeah. I even read it off of like something Will Smith said. Will and it was Smith like, provides nuggets of wisdom, him and he Jada. Knows he knows they what do. he's talking they about. They know they, what they're they doing. Yeah. And uh, in the end, my happiness is my responsibility. And so is yours. And then together, we're both happy together. Yes. But if you ever give somebody that much power to make you happy or miserable, massive mistake. Yeah, that is, uh, that is a very slippery, dangerous slope. Yeah, it'll it's, never it's, end well. It's a lot of pressure. And that's just, it's, uh, it's just unreasonable. There's no way for that to, to work out. Those expectations just cannot be met. Yeah. There's and again, no too, like, I, I'm, she's very busy, luckily. And so am I to where I, I kind of, I, I don't know if I did it on purpose, but I strategically planned my week that Monday and Tuesday are super busy. And then it kind of winds down towards Friday, yeah. but my Monday, like I wake up, I have to eat. I have to take care of my animals. I have to work out. Then I have a stream Then I go teach at the school. Then I stream again at 11 until one in the morning. So like my Monday is shot. Like we're probably not going to talk a lot or see each other. Yeah. And luckily She's super busy as well. And we talk when we talk, everything's great. Cool. Like it's, it's, it, it just is what it is without it being like a, you know, oh, well, you're always so busy or, right. oh, I never get to talk to you or what are you, what are you doing? I, you know, no, and like, then when you do see each other, then it's like, okay, cool. How'd your day go? It's not like right. you can like connect and unwind together. Yes. I am very much, uh, I'm very much a believer that humans are just not meant to be around each other 24 seven. Sure. Like yeah. even like Renee, there is a lot more to Renee than just mom. Like you are also an individual. You are a wife. You are a mom. Like you have to be all three of those things. Yeah. You can't just be, you know, you need individual time and you need family time and you need kid time and you need a wife. Yeah, time. Like there's, it there's has so to be different way. versions of yourself and so many different hats you end up wearing that it's like, yeah, you, you need to like take care of what those identities are and not everything is the same. Cause yeah, when I'm in mom mode, it's different than when it's just like me and John even being together, even though those days don't really happen anymore, <laughs> but <Yes>. they will. <laughs> but yes. yeah, I mean, it, the version of me when I'm sitting here doing this show or doing my XM show or whatever I happen to be doing is different than all those other versions of myself. So, and they all need different attention from me. Well, and the key too, is like, you have to be able to say, you know, Hey, uh, 
I, I, I need a day to kind of go do this, whatever. And it has to be met with like, okay, great. Like have fun instead of, Oh, well, like you totally. don't want to be around me. To guilt somebody or, into like, oh, yeah. Ha- like hey, what a bad fun. feeling. Oh my God. Oh. Was it hard for you to like take that time to yourself and to get back into the dating world coming out of a divorce? It was interesting. Yeah. Um, so, you know, luckily my divorce was not nasty whatsoever. It was very, very, very uh, amicable and we're on great terms. And like, if, if you wrote down like the perfect version of how people should get divorced, it would be that. Mm-hmm. Like it was started and finished with That's a really nice to hear. Yes. And that's just how, if two mature people can do it, that's how it should be done. Like people can be cruel, man. And they can yep. like- Divorces could be years and years and money and money and money yeah. as opposed to, like I said, mine was over and done in a month and it's, it, we're, we're great. Yeah. Like I, 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 we, we pass the animals off every weekend and like, <laughs> we're, we're good. Yeah. So, um, getting out of that, uh, I think once I kind of was like, you know, I bought a house, I was in here by myself and I went like, okay, like this is start of something new. This is start of something different. And it's a very we, dude house, by the way. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> Um, you are, there's more to it, whatever. Um, but it's, it's, I don't know. I wasn't in, like I said, I, I'd always kind of been in the same pattern of if a, a relationship ends, I immediately get in another one. And so this was the first time that I went like, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't think I'm in a huge hurry. Yeah. So, um, I kind of went on like a couple dates here and there, but even God, and, and, what I would give to be like at the same restaurant that you were going out on a first date for. I would so love. <laughs> it was, it was really funny actually, because like I'd go on these dates and like, so I joined, you know, obviously I don't know what I, I it, and also keep in mind, this is like COVID time. Oh yeah. So like, how am I supposed to ask somebody out when all the restaurants are closed and everything else? <laughs> and then also I'm on these, like, so Spears tells me about these dating apps and I go on them and I, like, okay, hi, you don't know me, but like, do you want to come over to my house and I'll make you dinner? What a, like, I'm, I promise I'm not going to kill you. Yeah. I, like, how am I supposed to get off on like a, a first date? Um, how, how can we even start on, on like the first step in these circumstances? Yeah. Like, it sounds so weird. So, um, I mean, luckily some people were like, like, yeah, that's cool or whatever. And I ended up having a couple dates and, uh, you know, just imagine so I can't remember what pictures I used on my oh things, my God. but imagine like it's the Tyler Breeze face on this <laughs> dating app. Yeah. And so like, I'm getting these dates and I start talking to these, to these women. And within like 20 minutes, they literally go like, wow, you're not really like anything that I thought you're going to be like. And I go, what do you mean? They're like, well, going off your pictures, we kinda, I kind of thought you were going to be an asshole. And I was like, but why, but you still on a date with me? If you thought I was going to be an asshole, like what is happening? That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And so, <laughs> um, and even like, I'm, I'm, I'm a very like non-confrontational person. So then these, then like, they kind of ask very like straight up and they just kind of go like, uh, what are you looking for? Like, are, like, wh- are you looking for like a relationship? Or are you just looking to kind of have a fun time? Like, what is it? And I tell them like, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not looking for a relationship right now. Yeah. And they go, okay, cool. Thank you. Like, thank you for the honesty kind of thing. And I went, Oh, okay. I can just tell you that without it like being like a big fight or something. Right. Like, right. It's like, yeah, that's, I guess that's what mature grown up dating is like. <laughs> and I went, okay, cool. And then that kind of turned into, I don't know, maybe like a six month span where I just was like going on dates here or there. And then, you know, just kind of having fun and being fun with myself, like having fun yeah. on my own terms. And like, I was just kind of living life. Oh, that sounds, that sounds nice. But now you've got a hot little number. You've got yes. your cute little girl. I don't know how I saw that you had a girlfriend. It was like maybe somebody had creeping, tagged something. Creeping, like I weirdo. must have been creeping. <laughs> I must have been. Because I feel like she actually she just told me that she turned her Instagram back to private because there was some weirdos on there. Were it you must one have been me. It must have Were been you me. one of them. Actually, oh, you know, I, I was just like going off about this um this morning because I did a private Instagram account for my daughter and yeah. some <laughs> losers hacked it. Come on. Oh yeah. It was literally up for like three days. Like get a life. People are so weird and dumb. Yes. Um, why do you and Biggie call each other Charles? Oh God. Um, (laughs) so (laughs) you might get this, you might not. Um, so there is a, uh, back in like, I don't know, maybe the early two thousands, 
there was a kind of like um when you know like the viral things started happening like youtube clips and whatever uh-huh. there was a there was an old x-men cartoon and these guys dubbed over top of it so like as the cartoons playing out they were saying whatever they wanted on it and it was really funny and have you ever heard anybody say like i'm the juggernaut bitch no so i, I didn't think <laughs> you would but it was like a big thing for like a long time and in this thing uh it's an x-men cartoon obviously and one of the characters in it is Charles Xavier. Mm-hmm. And Charles Xavier is Professor X. Yeah. Um, but that like, I know. I'm up yeah. to speed on that. Yes. And when they're talking in this, like, in this um, cartoon, they start, uh, they, they keep saying, like, like uh, I think Char- Professor X is doing something to Juggernaut, maybe. And, um, and Juggernaut's like, get out of here, Charles. Like, and he just, like, he hit him or whatever. And, like, he just keeps calling him Charles. Like, oh, Charles, you're in my head and all this stuff. <laughs> and so me and Woods were just kind of, because, like, Woods knew about it and, like, you know, whatever. And I can't remember. I think we even brought it up and he knew what it was. He knew exactly what it was. He was like, oh, man, that was great, whatever, whatever. And I started calling him Charles just, like, uh, randomly because he said something and I started being like, oh, Charles, get out of here, Charles, whatever. And I was just doing the, the Juggernaut thing. Well, this is what New Day does is they just jack a, a, a nickname that you give somebody. <laughs> and then because there's three of them, they, now there's three of them saying it to me. So now it's like they came up with the nickname. Charles. They just straight up plucked the nickname from E and threw it back at me. And there's only one of me against three of them and they win. That's some bullshit. It's this is what happens. <laughs> and um, so I, I just, I started calling him Charles. He started calling me Charles. I refused to give up the nickname that I made up and he refuses to as well. And then we just kind of go from there. Everybody is Charles. Everybody's Charles. Everybody is Charles. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, well, Breeze, I really appreciate you jumping on a little oral sessions here with me. It, um, I think it. it's about time that you, um, you know, get those abs, get the self tanner out. Cause we're <laughs> all, we all need a little breeze in our lives. It's I think so. I think so. It's around the corner. It's it's gonna happen, and it I won't be too far off. I don't think. Happen. I'm back. Like I said, I'm back to like feeling pretty good. I, I yeah. want to say maybe I'm at like ninety ish percent right now. Okay. Um, my That's weights a pretty are going good back. Percentage. My weights are going back up. I'm okay. able to push some stuff now, so I got to get back in shape. Feel you know where I'm at. Wrestling wise, I got to hop in and kind of do some things. I feel like I'll get very tired very quickly. Yeah, get a little um, blown up but then we'll kind of go from there and, uh, and, and see what's up. Hell yeah. All right. Well, dude, thanks for popping on. I will see you in the fantasy football or fantasy football, fantasy basketball league, <laughs> yeah. um, where I would say I'm going to crush you, but my team is the shit. So I, I watched you, I watched you dismantle your whole team <laughs> and then had no clue how to refill those spots. I know. Cause you're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. Can you help me? You had, you had like nine spots available for picks. And I, went, I got a bunch of losers when we were doing our draft. I drafted a bunch of guys that were on the IR. That's not going to do me any good. I had to clear those bums out of there. So you know what I actually thought about? This is the scheming me always thinking. We should combine our schemer. We should combine our resources. You should trade me anyone that's no, good. No. And then no. if I win, we split it. It's bullshit because I saw the trade <laughs> come in for you. You wanted my James Harden. Get out of here. I'm not giving you Harden. It's the only good guy I have. Give me all your good people. We can destroy <laughs> this league, Renee. I like a notification pops up. Uh, what would it be? What's your team called? Uh, Bree- Breezy Baby. Oh, Breezy Baby. Yeah, Breezy Baby wants to uh, trade you for James Harden and uh, Van Fleet. I'm like, absolutely not. Give me all your peeps. That's all I got. We'll split it. We need a, <laughs> we need, we need a, a partnership here. I mean, it doesn't sound terrible. Let's, we'll, this is we'll how talk you win these things. Line. We'll talk this offline and figure things. it out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, enjoy your streams. Enjoy being the busiest guy that's not wrestling currently and look forward to you... Uh, Slapping on some trunks and getting out there and doing some drop kicks. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, dude.